Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, race number 10 at Belmont Park on Saturday, the second of two graded stakes races at beautiful Belmont. It is the grade two Kelso handicap. We're going a one turn mile. It's a race for three year olds and up. Just want to remind everybody those DRF clocker reports are available on DRF.com. You can purchase at DRF.com forward slash clocker. They are provided daily by Mike Welsh and his expert clocking team for the entire Belmont Fall Championship meeting. Now let's meet the fields for the Grade 2 Kelso Handicap. We've got seven entered in here, a couple cross-centered across the country in the Mid-Atlantic area with big racing going on. We've got uh, the favorite as uh, the number five, Prince Lucky, is two to one on David Aragona's morning line. And as we take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector, it's the rare gray bar scenario, which indicates no speed, which is just especially rare, I would think, in a one-turn mile race in North America. We do see Prince Lucky up close to the pace as the number five. Pat on the back, the three, if this pace projector is right, would be very tough to beat. Yeah, I think they'll both be forward in this race. Um, True Timber, the two, to me, is a horse who will probably be forward in this race as well. So, you know, we'll see how that all plays out. Um, either way, Prince Lucky does feel like the horse to be in here. The number one, Monongahela, you know, will likely be rallying from the back of the pack. This horse was sort of a bridesmaid for most of his career before exploding to take the grade three Philip Island, two starts back at Monmouth. I have no idea where that race came from. Not only did he win with a 102 buyer speed figure after consistently coming up short, but he showed much improved early speed that day. He came back to earth in the Whitney when he was simply overmatched. This is a good spot for Monongahela if the pace is right at a price. You can use this horse. Yeah, I definitely would use him. I don't know if he's running here or not, um, but if he does, I think he's a horse you want to consider. I like that since service has taken over, he has found more positional speed. Um, his win two back, it wasn't against horses like this, but it suggests that he you know, can run fast enough to be competitive here. And I think shorter is better for this horse. Those nine furlong races and longer, I think it's too far for this horse. It looked like the number two, True Timber, was coming to himself towards the end of last year with the runner-up effort in the Cigar Mile. If you remember that day, pattern recognition just kind of got away with an easy lead over a speed-friendly track. True Timber tried to get into the race with a four-wide bid and ran a good second. And then they kind of foolishly ran him in the Pegasus World Cup. And then they kind of foolishly ran him in the Godolphin Mile. And now he's back to earth, but he's doing it off of a lengthy layoff. And I kind of like him at even shorter distances than this mile. Yeah, I think the mile's okay for him. I, I Maybe I'm with you. Maybe I think he's a better sprinter overall. And he, he's run some really nice races. I thought a cigar mile was good, um, even though that wasn't a strong addition of the cigar mile. Um, you know, listen, he's got races that make him a contender in here. We'll see if he's ready off the layoff. When the three pat on the back is right, he's one of the more consistent New York Reds on the circuit for Jeremiah Engelhart. The horse is close to $1 million in career earnings. He has been plagued by feet problems throughout his career. But we'll go back to his most recent start, the tail of the cat at Saratoga. Several horses were involved in an early pace battle. He's down towards the inside. He's eventually going to get tired as the good trip closer, Bone Ray Zone, mows them all down. This was a solid effort for pat on the back. And it's nice to see him back to the races without another pesky leg layoff line add in the fact that he's going to be prominent early and he's a strong contender yeah i think he is a strong contender even though most of his success has come against new york reds he's run really well in open company more than once including that race right there where you know he had some problems leading into that race um he dueled between horses early before he got tired i think six furlongs might even be a little short for this horse i actually feel like the mile is probably his best distance i think he fits really well in this race and he's won five of ten at Belmont, never off the board over Big Sandy. Golden Brown is a really underrated horse for an underrated trainer in Pat McBurney. All this one's done is win four of five this year with the only loss coming in the Alley Dar Stakes fund. The quality performer Tom's Data, he rebounded from that race with a win against New Jersey Bread Company at Monmouth on August 25th. Let's watch that race right now. Golden Brown has tactical speed in these two turn races. He's in the black hat striking the front right now. And once he makes the lead, he goes about his business. He is a consistent performer in the low to mid 90 buyer range. He's also cross centered at Parks and at Laurel on Saturday. Yeah, he's a pretty uh, good horse. He's a pretty versatile horse, too. So they got a lot of options for him this weekend. We'll see where he runs. This is an easy win for him. You can see there's not a lot of running going on behind him, but um, I won't hold that against this horse. He ran well in that spot, and he's just very, very consistent.
Prince Lucky's kind of been an all or nothing for Todd, hasn't he, over the last year and a half or so? He won that easy goer in game fashion, then unfortunately got injured and went to the sidelines for the rest of the year. He was pretty good at Gulfstream in his two graded stakes races, and then he bombed in the, in the Westchester. I think you could give the Westchester to a sloppy track. The Met Mile you could give to the fact that he had no chance racing wide against that field on that day. And then he came back in the state dinner and he paid kind of a juicy five to one, Mike. Let's watch that race right now. Up and on the pace throughout. Here's Prince Lucky on the outside, on the front end right now, and he just goes away. He is capable of winning with triple digit buyers. That makes him very tough in this spot, and I expect him to be attached to, to pat on the back's throat latch when the real running begins. I like that win from him right there, but that was a pretty good allowance field. I love the ride Johnny B gave him. He just went on with it from the start to take the lead. Um, and the horse did the rest. Um, listen, he just makes a lot of sense in here, Dan. If I was going to nitpick him at a short price, I would say that the three triple-digit buyer wins this year, you know, they're all easy trips for him against maybe not the greatest competition. But he just looks like the horse to beat in this race because he's going to be forward and he's got three races that they just the, – the figures just sort of tower over this field. When Plainsman won the grade three discovery last fall for Brad Cox, I really thought – that this was a horse that could be a factor as a four-year-old, but he disappeared after that race, missed a lot of time, returned under the care of Shug McGahey at Saratoga, going seven furlongs, and I thought this was a very useful prep. We go to Plainsman's most recent start, and the rejuvenated uncontested just went right to the front, and Plainsman was last throughout. Joel Rosario, I thought, rode him very carefully on the turn. He's splitting horses here, and I would not be surprised at all if the goal was accomplished, which was, let's get a nice late kick into this horse first time off the layoff and have him ready to fire second time back the lack of pace in this race is worrisome but i like the way plainsman returned to the races yeah that, that looked like a prep to me um i thought he ran really well i think it's worth at least going back to his you know last three or four races as a three-year-old and realizing that he's not a slow horse he doesn't have to be last early um i think he can get the right trip in this race and i'm expecting this horse to take a big step forward in here which obviously he'll have to do Tale of Silence, the number seven, finished third behind Plainsman in the video cut that we just saw. It was his first race off of a much smaller layoff, but he has run some nice races in the past, upsetting the Westchester with a perfect trip last year, finishing second behind Prince Lucky in the Gulfstream Mile. I just wonder if he's as good as these horses. Prince Lucky seems to have his number. Yeah, I wonder if he um, is good enough to beat this field. He is the kind of horse who at a big price I'd be looking to use underneath, though, because he's run um, into the money at some big prices along the way. This horse can get a piece of this race. Who do you like in the grade two, Kelso? Let's throw up our picks right now for the folks. Yeah, I mean, you know, I put Pat on the back on top, um, just thinking this was a better distance for him and that he'd be forward, be placed in here. And I just felt like maybe he'd be an OK price in this race. I'm not against Prince Lucky necessarily, but I went three, five and six. I'm hoping that Prince Lucky can keep Pat on the back, at least somewhat occupied, and set things up for Plainsman's late kick. I think Plainsman certainly has the class to win a race like this. Perhaps he wants a little bit of a longer distance and a faster pace, but at four to one on the morning line, I think that's a fair price. I went six, five, and three in the grade two Kelso handicap, the second of two graded races at Belmont Park on Saturday, and the Kelso has an approximate post time of 5.57 Eastern. Best of luck.